doing one of many radio interviews. He is Greg Pence. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much for the time, as always. How was your weekend? Did you have a, a good one there? Good morning, Steve. Well, we were on the campaign trail uh, about three quarters of the day Saturday, but then, as I always do, I, I try to take off Sundays. I think I've been able to do that almost with the exception of one or two, some events I needed to do over the last three years. But, yeah, I got a little rest, watched the Colts lose again, uh, I'm sorry to say, but... Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? How about any legislation with regards to Colts winning? Is there anything you could work in, or is that just not possible? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not a chance, right? <laughs> I, if, uh, I'm sure all the Congress people would do that, then, right? Which yeah. We'd have never-ending bills. Right. Let's yeah. uh, let's get to a couple of notes here. A Republican plan to renew the American dream. Can you speak to that subject, please? Yeah, Steve. I, you know, I, I wrote an op-ed. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, trying to feel put a positive spin on where we could go as with a Republican administration and and a House of Representatives. And one is renew the American dream, and that. Uh, you know, honor our veterans, make sure all children get good schools that they can go to. Uh, the second uh, point is rebuild uh, our the greatest economy that we were enjoying. We need to get 10 million good paying jobs, people back to work uh, as we had before, uh, get uh, end our dependence on China and enhance our economic security. You know, they, we've been taken advantage of and we now know that. And upgrade on modernized America's infrastructure, which you and I have talked about that a lot on the radio here. That's been a real focus of mine in the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. And finally, restore our way of life. we we got to continue to fight and defeat the virus. But now we also have to ensure the safety and security of our communities. Steve, did you know that there were 570 declared riots in the United States? And wait for it. In 220 cities wow. across this country in the last 100 days. You know, and that goes to we got to preserve our freedoms under the Constitution. We need law and order back. So that, you know, that those are kind of the three tenets that I think we got to stop the defund, dismantle, and destroy what we know is the right way to govern this country. Uh, and I won't get too political beyond that. But yeah, that's, I see a positive way forward, not a negative. Uh, Representative Pence is my guest. You you have, and you've told me before, and I feel the same way, absolutely no problem with people peacefully protesting and so on and so forth. But have you seen Indianapolis still today? It It's really not back to 100% from everything that happened in downtown Indy. Well, I have, Steve. Uh, uh, Denise, Denise and I went up there yesterday. Uh, she had never seen it. That's my wife. And, yeah. uh, you know, they're still boarded up places. What the... the the key is that there was nobody down there. Mm -hmm. And typically on a Sunday afternoon, and it, the weather was good, uh, there's people walking around all over the place, you know, shopping and just, just strolling, exercising. But it's that way. I, I got some bad news for you, though. I, you know, I was in Salt Lake City with my brother. It's the same way. Really? I mean, that's all I hear. You know, we know... Uh, we're, we're close to Cincinnati, we're close to Louisville, we're close to, you know, Indianapolis. All the downtowns are closed. All across this country, they're closed. That's what a sad state of fear. We have to have law and order come back here. Uh, you know, and I would challenge uh, the leaders in those communities to get that going as fast as they can, because the economic impact, uh, there, that's a lot of jobs that weren't, weren't, go, weren't happening downtown on Sunday. Representative Greg Pence is my guest. The vice presidential debate, the only one that they're going to have, of course, last week. You had some thoughts on that. Uh, could you share with our listeners? Yeah, of course. I'm so biased; it's it's almost uh, pitiful to be honest with you. I thought I, you know, I thought my brother he made me Hoosier proud. Uh, it, he just did such a nice job. He demonstrated Hoosier hospitality, Hoosier values. He was kind. He was considerate. He exhibited the leadership that he has for years and as he has continued to develop uh, and his, you know, his knowledge and grasp of the, of the subject matter, I think, was well in demonstration uh, during debate. He just 
just did a great job. But but the most important thing is his kindness uh, came through. His good heart came through. You you've known him for twenty some years, mm-hmm. Steve, and I know you know that about him too. You know, I was wondering if you and your brother, who's the older one again? You you are right. Uh, I'm the oldest of Uh-oh. six, and all. All of us were there to include my mother and stepfather. You and your brother got if you and your brother the Veep, if you got into a little wrestling match, who takes that win? Who who gets that win? He he wrestled in high school. Oh oh, okay. So he's he's got the moves. Okay. I'm gonna give it to him. Did you talk to him after the after the debate by chance? We we did. We actually when we got there we had to be tested and you know, go through the whole secret service and they had the whole they had the whole uh, motel, hotel, cordoned off. Cordoned mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Uh, but then we met before the debate. Uh, he he took the motorcade over to the university, and we we were in buses. But we all got together, the whole family, all my siblings, uh, sister in laws, brother in laws, mom and Basil, and we all said some prayers beforehand, and then then he headed on over, and we headed on over, and afterwards we had a pizza party. Oh. Pizza, did, you have, did you have Pizza hotel. King? Did you, did you ship in the Pizza King? Well, I don't know what it was. It was out in uh, Salt Lake City. Oh, you would have known if it was Pizza King. Come on now. Did anybody talk about the fly, the goofy fly on his hair? Well, where we were sitting way up in a balcony, uh-huh. we couldn't see that far. Yeah. Um, because we, we were, uh, it was only the immediate families were down closer to the stage mm-hmm. and then all the TV cameras in between, but we didn't see the flam, but we talked about it. You know, I thought that that's what you talk about when, of course I'm getting biased on, you know, I got it. But that's I got what it. you talk about when, when, when the vice president wins the debate, you got to talk about something goofy like that. So, you know, fly lands on somebody's head. I guess it was humorous. It was fun to talk about, but no, we couldn't see it. Gotcha. We uh, did we, what we call it when we were eating pizza. Yep. Uh, our family, we call it, we chop it up. So we were sitting there just, you know, yeah. listening to him and, you know, giving our observations. And he was, he and Karen were very happy with, with the job he did and, you know, the way he was able to uh, carry himself during that debate. You know, it's it's always important to uh, as do unto others as you have them do unto you. And I thought he was very polite and kind. Greg Pence is my guest this week in Delaware County. Um Small business assistance clearly still needed to varying degrees, whatever that number turns out to be. From your perspective, I assume, and I think I'm pretty clear in assuming, that you're kind of feeling like the other party is not necessarily going in the direction that our country needs to go. Uh, what what can we do about that? Well, you know, Steve, I actually introduced two bills. Uh, we were We were in session for three weeks in September, uh, came back about 10 days ago, uh, passed the uh, CARES Act, you know, call it the third or the fourth CARES Act. It was going to go nowhere. I was very disappointed that we went there in September to take focus and, t- and, and take time to help Main Street. You know, we looked down all the streets as we just talked, whether it's the big cities or, or my town, Muncie. Uh, you know, we have restaurants closed. We have little shops that aren't doing so well. And we, we, I actually introduced a, an extension of the PPP, pay, Paycheck Protection Program, which would allow small businesses that had still revenue problems be able to get another Paycheck Protection Program to help uh, keep their employees uh, working and paid. And I also inter, uh, co-sponsored a bill to take the funds the state has, have already received and let the state ex- Expand that to help communities, first responders, hospitals, and with a focus on infrastructure, actually, uh, and, you know, help this economy continue to get going. We got nothing done. Uh, I'm sorry to say I am frustrated by that. The talk about us coming back before the election, I, I, I really doubt that that can happen. There's some mechanics there. We know that the Senate is busy with the uh, Supreme Court confirmation hearings. We haven't even introduced the bill. The House of Representatives is not in session, so we would have to be called back, and uh, I, that makes no sense to me. So I guess we're going to have to wait, as the president said, uh, shortly after the um, uh, the election to get back to taking care of Americans out there. 
keep people in jobs. Representative Pence, 6th District, uh, if they need to reach out and get to you, how do they do that? Yeah, please do. Pence.house.gov, we're here to help. It's our job.